and welcome to another producer's pick of the SEC. Week 10 of the SEC season. College football rankings are out. We know what SEC teams are on there. And also we're going to break down some of these games this week in the SEC. I'm Marquise Munson, joined by producer James Hardy here. And we're going to start breaking down week 10 of the SEC conference. And we're going to kick it off with speaking of college football rankings, the number 14 team in those college football rankings, the Auburn Tigers, as they head to College Station to play the Texas A&M Aggies. Now the Aggies lost a tough game at home last week against Mississippi State, and then now Auburn still trying to show that they're still a team that they can possibly be a contender. Maybe a team who can be a two-loss team that can possibly push up to the college football playoffs depending on how their record shows for it. And it starts with this Texas A&M Aggies team. Yeah, one of those Jekyll and Hyde type teams that uh, of course at the start of the year blew a five touchdown lead in the second half at UCLA. Uh, had they're even more so in my mind uh, their most embarrassing performance of the season against Mississippi State at home last week. So you don't know, and that's not even factoring in uh, a good, even though in a loss, a good performance against Alabama, as well as uh, a win over a pretty decent South Carolina squad as well, and a win at Florida. So you don't know how this Texas A&M squad is going to come out. And for Auburn, they got a couple of really big games against rivals in Alabama and Georgia over their next two conference uh, weekends after this weekend. So this could be a trap game for Auburn. And I do think Auburn will continue the trend in this series of the road team winning, but I don't see them covering that 15 point spread. So I say Auburn wins, but by a touchdown. I'm gonna say Auburn as well. I think, and I don't think there's gonna be a two loss team to make it to the college football playoffs, but I think if there's any team that has a good chance of possibly doing that, it's gonna be Auburn. And it starts with this game against Texas A&M. You got Auburn still on the schedule. You got Georgia and you still got Alabama and you have both of those games at home. This is kind of the last big road game here for the Auburn Tigers. I think that defense in front against Kellen Maud is going to be a, a def, definitely a difference maker in this game. So I'm going to go with the Auburn Tigers in this one. You know, sad that Texas A&M had to lose to Mississippi State last week at home, and they're going to have to make it back-to-back -back losses in College Station because I think they lose this game. Speaking of Mississippi State, Mississippi State going back home to Starkville, and they're going to be playing UMass. And here goes one of these... Uh, I don't want to call them cupcake games. Get out but the popcorn then because that's exactly what UMass is for Mississippi State coming off of a huge SEC road win. Get out the popcorn because Mississippi State is going to be feasting on uh, one of those uh, cream puff type of opponents in UMass. Yeah, I'm going to go with um, Mississippi State in this one. It's hard to go against an SEC team going up against a non-conference team, even though we have saw what would happen if um, if you have a homecoming week and then what happens if a small-time school comes to your program. But I'm going to go with Mississippi State in this one. They're ranked 16 in the college football playoff rankings. I think they got a little bit more momentum going after seeing those rankings. So I'm going to go with the Mississippi State Bulldogs in this one. Two teams in the SEC who aren't ranked, and that's Florida and Missouri. Now, we saw Florida give Jim McElwain the can after that game against Georgia last week. And now, they're up the, the Randy Shannon is filling in for Jim McElwain the rest of the season. There's a lot of buzz going around Randy Shannon and, and a possible replacement for Jim McElwain. And we'll see when he goes up against this this team in Missouri. Well, they're on the road. You, te you can find out in these type of games what just the uh, mentality of a, of a team like Florida is with their head coach gone and Jim McElwain. But Missouri's been able to put some points on the board uh, this year, especially the last three or so weeks even in their loss to Georgia, put up four touchdowns. And with Florida really lacking consistency all season long on the offensive side of the ball, I like Missouri to come out uh, victorious against the Gators. Yeah, I like Missouri in this game too. I think it's going to be a competitive game. I think Drew Locke is going to have a good game for Missouri. But I, I also think that Randy Shannon is going to coach a good game because this is a potential job for him. It's a potential head coaching job. And I know, you know, when interim head coaches, we saw with Ed Ogeron and what he did with LSU as an interim head coach. And I think you get the same thing with Randy Shannon. But when they're going on the road against this Missouri team, and even though I don't like rooting for Missouri when they're going against SEC opponents because it never ends well, they usually play really well when they go against non-conference opponents. 
but I'm going to go with the Missouri Tigers in this one. And speaking of non-conference opponents, here's another one for you, James. Western Kentucky, they're going to Nashville, the beautiful city of Nashville, to play the Vanderbilt. A Commodore. short trip, mind you, for the Hilltoppers making the short trip down uh, from Bowling Green to Nashville, but I like uh, Vanderbilt to get a little bit of relief from conference play from what's been a grueling uh, conference slate, still winless in conference play, but uh, I still like Vanderbilt to come out for about a two touchdown victory or so at home. Yeah, I'm going to give it to Vanderbilt, even though uh, it's been a uh, rough season for them since that Alabama loss and Alabama since Alabama was next. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna actually go with Virginia or not Virginia, but <laughs> Vanderbilt in this one. I think they'll do a good job in this game. I think I'll give them three touchdowns. I'll give them three touchdowns. The lead over Western Kentucky. But South Carolina now traveling to the number one ranked team in college football rankings, and that is the Georgia Bulldogs. Now, Georgia, they have a lot of pressure on them now being the number one team. A lot of people didn't agree with them getting the number one seed over Alabama. Some people do, some people don't. But they'll have a chance to prove it this weekend against one of the sleeper teams in the SEC, South Carolina. Even though South Carolina hasn't been up to par as of recent weeks, but definitely a tough game in Athens for South Carolina to overcome. Well, I wonder for the Florida fans now that Matt Colwain's out, out of the scene in Gainesville, if uh, Will Muschamp's tenure is looking at least a little better because he's still been doing a really solid job with that South Carolina football program. And I think they play closer than maybe the point spread would indicate as far as the Vegas uh, line on that ball game over in Athens. But I do think Georgia, with that running game, just with the better overall talent as far as their depth, uh, pulls one out. Probably about a 17-point victory for the Bulldogs in Georgia. Yeah, I'm going to go with Georgia. Georgia's been really good at home this season. And you have to think three of their last four games are going to be at home in Athens. The only tough road game they have is against Auburn coming up uh, next week. So. Georgia pretty much controls their own destiny, to say the least, at that number one spot. So I think it starts with South Carolina as their Georgia beats down on the SEC. But we'll see next week when they have to go against Auburn. But this week I'm going to go with the South. I'm going to go with Georgia in this one, winning big, winning similar fashion to how they won the game against Florida last week. Now another game, Ole Miss versus Kentucky. Kentucky has been trying to slide up there in the SEC East, but Ole Miss, are they, is Ole Miss going to stop the momentum there for the Kentucky Wildcats? They, have, they do have to stop momentum, but it's their own momentum, negative-wise, that they had in that collapse at home against Arkansas. I just don't see how that doesn't carry over into this week's game against Kentucky and with a big win for Kentucky against Tennessee to get them bowl eligible. I like Kentucky to absolutely stomp Ole Miss this week. Come on, who hasn't beat Tennessee this year? Let's be fair now. Everybody's beat Tennessee. Well, amazingly, yeah. Butch Jones still has a job. Yeah, he has a job over Jim McElwain. But <laughs> and one guy that still has a job is Mark Stoops. And Mark Stoops is a quiet coach because I swear I thought this guy was not coaching at Kentucky anymore. Ever since I asked him that question in the SEC media days like two, three years ago. But he still has a job there in Kentucky. And he's doing a good job with this Kentucky Wildcats team. And... I think that they're going to have a lot of momentum going into that Georgia game until Georgia kind of puts the stomping on the Wildcats there. So I'm going to go with the Kentucky Wildcats in this one. And James, guess what? There's another non-conference game this week, and I know you're excited about this one. Coastal Carolina going up against the Arkansas Razorbacks. Throw game out of the, the week. Throw out the record books. Folks. CBS is definitely broadcasting this one. Coastal Carolina versus Arkansas. Man, we got this one. <laughs> Arkansas. That's plain and simple. Is there any breakdown in this game? If this was, and I know our, our uh, Coastal Carolina, by the way, is a Sunbelt Conference member. Oh yeah, see, and I know our video guy Ben does not like me to talk about basketball in these, but if this was a basketball game, I would definitely. That might actually be a pretty competitive. It might be a competitive more. game, but since it's on the football field, I'm gonna go with Arkansas Razorbacks in this one without a question. And then the last game we have, hopefully there'll be people at this game. I don't know if there will be or not. We saw the uh, protest from the fans there in Neyland Stadium and being empty for this Southern Miss versus Tennessee ball. Bring your paper bags with you for this one. 
And it's, uh, it, for the veteran hardcore Alabama fans, they know what Southern Miss can do with an SEC team from time to time. Kentucky learned that last year, and even this year, as far as a close loss at home to Kentucky uh, for Southern Miss to start this season. And I tell you, I tell you, I think Southern Miss might actually have an opportunity, even though they they had one of their worst games of the season against UAB at home last week. I'm going to call an upset here and pick Southern Miss because Tennessee's in disarray uh, with a lot of uncertainty with Butch Jones. I think that'll be a distraction for Tennessee. and think Southern Miss has enough talent to go up there, especially if they play some good defense. I'm going to pull them, pick them to pull off an upset this week. So when Tennessee came to Tuscaloosa, I saw a sign that said, we want Bama, that was crossed out. We want Florida, that was crossed out. We want Georgia, that was crossed out. And then said, we want Southern Miss. Does Tennessee really want Southern Miss? We're going to find out this weekend. James, I'm not going to go too far-fetched on this one, man. I'm, I, I, I'm all for the upsets, and upsets make college football amazing. But come on now, I'm going to go with Tennessee in this one. <laughs> Butch Jones, man, I, I'm going to give you some kind of credit for this season, man. So if you can't be Southern Miss, and if you still have a job after that, then... I can't man. wait for the post-game press conference either way. Yeah, I can't wait either. He's like, hey, you guys finally won a game. Southern Miss, congratulations. Well, we got to get another uh, Champions of Life quote out of him before he exits the scene in Knoxville. I don't know. It might be a different board game. It might be shoots and ladders or something. It might be a different board game there for Butch Jones. He'll have a, l a ton of time to play him as soon as he's not a head coach at Tennessee anymore. If you want to look at our LSU and Alabama breakdown and the score predictions from our staff, from me to James, to Ben, to Ryan Fowler, Gary Harris, and all the staff. Make sure you check out Tide1029.com for the staff predictions for LSU Alabama to see what we got in that game. For Marquise Munson, James Hardy, we thank you guys for tuning in to week 10 of the SEC predictions. We'll see you next week for week 11, where we have some big games slated as well. So see you later, and enjoy your non-conference games this weekend.